this is the hotbed. For this hotbed, I did not put soil in. I filled it up with rabbit manure and sawdust and wood and cardboard. And I just planted into the sawdust. Um, I did have starts that I had started under lights, so I did not put seeds in. And I did put fertilizer on the top of the sawdust. I just wanted to see if it would work. These are old irrigation ho hoses, and I just screwed them in. You could use a conventional hose as long as it wasn't brittle to also do the edge. So that is another zero waste way to do things. I took a two by four and attached it along the side here on this one because it's a really long bed. That's a long expanse to try and keep in if I'm just using baling twine. This bed is made exactly the same way as the other bed. This is how I originally made the other bed. I used baling twine from hay and pallets and then on the inside what I used was feed sacks and old tarps, but mostly feed sacks. I wanted to see if it could be done with feed sacks. The, the funny thing is they don't really hurt much. They come in and they just nibble on it and they eat the earwigs if they catch bugs or anything in it. That one right there was eating a weed that had blown in, but they weren't eating, like you see the strawberries? They're not eating the strawberry leaves. They really like the Swiss chard. I've got one little weed over here. Let's see, where is it? This right here. That actually needs to be pulled out. This is what he was eating. Is that lamb's quarters? I think that's lamb's quarters. I don't know how that one got in there, but we'll pull it out. Because we don't want it going to seed. Where is it? Is that it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give that to a rabbit? Look at that. Yeah, it's beautiful. For some reason they think my wedding ring is going to be delicious and then it's not delicious. And yes, I did purposefully plant clover in here. I wanted to see how a cover crop would do in a hotbed. Hey guys. These hotbeds for us, they do give us a lot of food, but for the mo most part, I just really like to experiment with them and see what works. And so I have a few tomato plants here and a few squash plants, but I have rows and rows and rows of tomatoes and squash up in the front. So when I feel like it's time to cut down a bed and start back over, because I have redundancy, I have many different plants in many different places. It's okay for me just to cut this bed down and start over and show you guys how I do it. All right, this is the garden. These are frost covers. And I don't weed this garden anymore. All the plants got big enough to fend for themselves and are productive. We've got beets, potatoes, more potatoes, Swiss chard. Um, can I go ahead and harvest a whole bunch of Swiss chard for the rabbits and go put it in their cage, please? And then in this one, we've got onions, maybe onions, sunflowers. And then over here, we've got corn. And then we've got sunflowers. And then this one has squash and tomatoes oh my gosh we thought we were doing watermelon in this row and then we've got one two three four rows of corn again they're big enough not to be bothered by the weeds at this point so we're just harvesting and then once we have the corn harvested and eaten we take the um, corn stalks themselves and feed them to the goats. There's some good corn. We've been eating this for a couple weeks now. And then on the end we have green beans. I don't know why, but we have had really poor luck with beans. So once again, I just don't care. If they're not gonna make it, they're not gonna make it. If they do make it, they do make it. We have enough food coming from other places, it just doesn't matter.
And then in order to get more mulch and fertility in the soil, uh, once we're done harvesting the garden, we're gonna put the goats up here and feed them here for the winter so that they can manure it. Um, and the cages that don't have, that have less than, that only have one rabbit in them, how much did you want me to give them? Um, four or five leaves probably. This yellow flowery seed would be considered a weed. It's called gumweed. As a medicinal herb, it is used for asthma. But I don't cut these weeds back because the bird, the, not the birds, the, um, the bees rely on it. It's kind of a hunger gap for the bees. So rather than cutting all my weeds back, I try to keep I try to keep a, some source of food for the bees all the time. This is called gumweed. Uh, it's really easy to do starts in the beds. This is a this is just a little seedling that I took out of the ground, put it in a pot, and then put in the bed. It got watered when everybody else got watered. Okay, it's really nice to have theoretical food. Food where you're like, look at what I grew. This is so cool. It's so nice. It's so healthy. Let's leave it. But if you find that you're not eating it, if you find you're not harvesting it, you know that that's not what should be planted there. What we're finding right now is that we have some plants that didn't get pollinated or that aren't maturing the way that we need them to be. So in our climate, if you have a little squash, if you have a little squash like that, that is never gonna be get, getting big enough to get eaten. It's just too immature at this point. Again, our first frost happens in like September and it's the end of August now. So that little guy's never gonna get big enough. So I'll harvest, I'll harvest whatever is mature because at this point, all this real estate, all this real estate could be in greens. It could be in winter greens. It could be in Chinese cabbage. There's all sorts of things that could be in this bed right now. Again, because I have so much produce in front. Okay, one thing I find, is that the flavor of things that are actually going to fruit is better if they're grown in dirt. Things like tomatoes seem to do better grown in dirt. They seem a little watery in the sawdust bed. I have found the same to be true of people that I know that plant aquaponics systems. When I, when I eat their, their fruit, it just tastes like water to me. And so it's not necessarily that I'm disappointed in it. It's a learning experience, but I do see that there is great value in traditional gardening, which would mean in the dirt. I think there's nutrition in the dirt that is not possible unless you've been doing it and you have lots of layers and lots of earthworms and things like that. I don't think that it's really possible to grow in an artificial substrate and have it taste and have as much nutrition as something that is grown in soil that maybe had a lot of animal fertilizer, a lot of care, a lot of green manures, but mostly just dirt. Okay, I wanna show you really quick how the cover works. Okay, that's how I cover it for cold nights. I put a, a furring strip on the bottom so that it can't flap around. It holds the weight down. But it also helps if the PVC pipes are even. So that one in the middle actually needs to be pushed down. I have two T-posts. 
one there and one exactly on the other side. I had to cover those with a pot bottle so that it wouldn't tear the fabric because if you get a high wind, you don't want anything jagged. Okay, what I do if there's going to be a heavy storm is I'll take the very bottom of the plastic and I'll use a staple gun and I'll staple the bottom. There at the bottom, at the very, very edge, I'll staple that with the staple gun. Pop, pop, pop. Just a few along the bottom and it keeps it from flapping. You can see little holes from where I've done that. See that little hole? That's from taking it and stapling it. I only do that when there's going to be a high wind. All right, so these are the pot bottles. These are just furring strips attached here and here. And then I have one little tiny screw that holds it on. And this prevents the, the wood from going through the fabric. These girls are sisters, so they will get along just fine. You generally can't put unrelated rabbits in together because they'll fight. But you can see down into the hotbed, we use it as a compost pile that's not shredded. I have wood, I have eggshells, I have cardboard, we have uh, fiber from sheep, fiber from rabbits, uh, feathers from when we butcher our chickens. That's what's in there. The wood you see here is from a cabinet maker shop that they gave away for free. We just had to have a trailer long enough to pick it up. So the rabbit cages fit on that lathe. And then they poop into the hotbed. I, I don't like to keep the rabbits on the hotbeds that are exposed to full sun during the day. So I'm strategic about when I have a cage on. The, the hotbeds that are out in full sun, I put the rabbits on top of them when it's spring or fall because it's not hot. So come December, we put the rabbits out and let them regenerate the hotbed in the greenhouse. And then come March, we take them out of the greenhouse and we put them on these hotbeds because it's nice outside and it won't overheat them. Okay, with the rabbits, I always, always have pellets in there for them, especially if you have babies, you need to have pellets in there because they need high protein. They can eat garden uh, refuse and that's, they. we think they like it because they prefer that over the pellets, but they have to have access to pellets too. We. We use the metal waterers because in the winter, those drip bottles will freeze solid. And we can't use glass, we can't use plastic because again, it freezes in the winter. So we use the metal ones and they work really well. I just used a baling twine. And these are standard pallets that are, they hit about at my belly button. Make sure you get the right size that you want. So I had this one used as a hay tarp first, and then I used it as the waterproof lining in my rabbit hutches. And now it has uh, served its purpose there. I'm redoing my rabbit hutches, so I pulled it off. And because it was under tin, it didn't break down very much. So I've doubled it over and I'm using it as the lining inside the hotbed. I'm now going to take some furring strips that we got from a cabinet maker shop for free and I'm going to attach those to the inside of the bed.
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that everywhere that it overlaps. I didn't know you were leaving. Yeah, Are you excited? To be leaving? Yeah. No. No. Do you have everything you need? I hope. Love you. Love you. Nice pants. Thanks. Nice face. <laughs> Thanks. I want to make sure to push everything back into the corner so it's not bulging right there. That one would work better somewhere else, so we'll do another one. The pros of this is that it's free or very inexpensive and that it works. If you want something beautiful, you can make something beautiful. You just have to go buy lumber for it and buy really pretty uh, metal siding for it, something like that. Now, once I have these two sides finished as well, I'm going to fill this up with wood, debris, big logs, small branches, cardboard, household compost, anything that will biodegrade goes into this. And then I'll put about six inches of sawdust on top. And then on top of that, I'll put my inch and a half or two inches of potting soil. And so I can fill one of these beds for about $20. It costs $11 for one bale of peat moss and then it costs $17 for an enormous bag that's almost as tall as me of perlite. I mix those together, I put some fertilizer, slow release fertilizer beads in them, rabbit manure if I have it, and then I'm good to go. If I just had these by themselves, the pallets, and then I put all this inside, for one thing it would rot the pallets because it would be too much water in contact with the pallets, and the next thing is is everything would be trying to come through these slats. You don't want that. I have made these with chicken wire before and it was an abysmal failure compared to my others. The chicken wire was a failure because it let too much air go through. I was constantly having to water. The inside of the bed didn't break down the way that it should have because the moisture didn't stay in. Don't put in pernicious weeds like bindweed. If I was gonna put bindweed in here, I'd let it dry out completely before I put it in here. But I'm pretty sure I've never put bindweed in here. I feed bindweed to my rabbits. And so um, grass can't get through. Um, if you took willow branches and then didn't put a lot of manure on top of them, they would probably re-sprout and grow. When carbon is exposed to nitrogen and bacteria, the more sides that are exposed, the faster it decomposes. With a log, you have the outside, the perimeter of the log that's being worked on, but the inside of it isn't cut up and exposed to the bacteria and nitrogen, so it doesn't break down quickly. If you fill this up immediately with compost or sawdust, it's gonna break down so quickly that you're gonna drop by 18 inches in the first few weeks. 
So that, that's the beauty of this is you can put really big carbon in here and it will actually save you money and save you in having to add more to the top because the inside is going to break down slowly because it's big things. This mama just had her babies while I was making the bed. She's cleaning herself up now. The babies are here in this. And I've given her some apple branches to chew on. She seems to have appreciated. She's got them pretty well worked down. So I think I'm gonna go up in the front field and see if I can get her some more delicious things to chew on. But we got a new mama. And they can be very snacky when they first give birth and they have been known to snack on their own offspring. So, I'm coming out and sea berries are really good for all critters. They're just an amazing, amazing source of feed. So I'm gonna come out and clip down some of these sea berries that I don't want to be coming up in the path anyway because they're very prickly. And I'm gonna take them to her and um, give her something really good for her to nibble on and also get some prickles out of my pathway. See how she's chewing on the um, newspaper? She's just desperate to chew on something and I don't, I don't want her to bite me. They could be really aggressive right after birth. She doesn't seem to be too bad but there you go. There's something for her to chew on. These are our new free ducks. They're all drakes. I wanted to bring some new genetics in. So we will keep the harlequin and the khaki Campbell for breeders. Cardboard boxes that are left made that aren't flattened do not work in a hotbed because they hold air on the inside and then as they collapse, you really have a big collapse because they were taking up a lot of space. So I need to take these apart and I will flatten them and then I'll probably put them in the new hotbed and then uh, fill this up with sawdust. But this would have been something the kids would have done when they were supposed to be out here putting a box in for compost, they were just dumping them in whole. So that's what they need to look like, it's flat. I've put one brace on the outside and I do use C-clamps to get it nice and tight. And that is just to keep the outside from bowing. This one isn't as long as the other one so it only needed a short piece and i do use scrap lumber for that these are our lathe our furring strips oh <laughs> and they they're interchangeable between the beds Okay, so I have four here. It's a little bit overkill, but rabbits move a lot, they bounce a lot, and so if you only have a couple, the, the cage can shift. So I've got four there. Kai is anchoring them at this end, again, so that the boards don't shift. All right, usually it's really stressful on rabbits to move them in their cage. They usually flip out, they get really worried. Um, so, generally I like to move the rabbits and then move the cage, which is why I like to have an extra cage. Come on, baby. There you go. Watch out for the 
library. Okay, we're gonna be super careful putting it down. Because we don't want to scare him. You have to tell me if I need to stop. One thing you don't want with rabbits is you don't want to leave anything you care about behind it or to the sides. And the reason for that is that when they pee, it squirts, it sprays. And so they would ruin plastic, they would ruin frost cloth, they would ruin paint. Anything that is going to be behind rabbits is going to get sprayed on. So that's why we have this blanket on it. It gives them shade, it gives them protection from weather, but it also protects whatever's behind and to the side. Underneath the, the fabric is plastic. It's old feed sacks that we attached, and that's the waterproof part. This is the shade part. So that's what it looks like. You can make this prettier. You can make it shorter. It's up to you. Um, the bunnies seem super happy in here but I do again have tomatoes in there. I don't want them to eat the tomatoes because the plants themselves are poisonous. You can see they're not frantic for food. They're not actually chewing on anything. And that's because they have all sorts of garden greens and things that are always in their cage. They always have green food. I still have to plant the bed, but the rabbits need to be on it for a little while before I do that. What'd you find? Did you find a lettuce? Yeah? You found a lettuce. Is it kind of fun to have something to burrow in? Hi, guy. Where are you going? Oh, but you're getting wet, aren't you? Because it just rained. Are you getting wet? Yeah, wet is not fun for you, is it? I don't think, I don't think they would be safe with you guys around. I think you get up there and think they were edible. So, because the turkeys are around, unless we put some kind of netting over the top, I think we would have a problem with the turkeys trying to be curious. Turkeys are eternally, turkeys are eternally curious. I think that's the bigger of the two. Yeah. So big. These guys are not very old, but they are big. Well, she was the largest of the whole batch. Was she? Yeah. Okay, you can see you can see the feed sack back there. That's actually their waterproof part. This part is their pee barrier part. Turkey, turkey. Ouch. What happened, honey? Her claw grabbed right there. Ouch, that would do it. You okay? All right, so they're in. They just need some water. Okay. And then we what's going to happen is they're going to poop and pee in here and they will refertilize the bed. So hopefully that was a good video. I'm going to break it up instead of showing you the whole process in one video, I think, just cuz I don't know. There's no way that these guys are going to get enough manure on this bed for me to show this to you in the next couple days. We now have all three of our expendable rabbit cages up on the hotbed. One, two, three, and Paige is currently feeding beet greens. Did you show them the beets that they came from? Yeah, I did. Super fun.